Today we will learn the sentencing of a Denver police sergeant accused of trying to arrange sex with a teenager over the internet. The case has now reached a plea deal. Sergeant Timothy Hyatt admitted to communicating through an app with someone he thought was a 14 year old girl. That girl was actually an undercover Jefferson County Sheriff's investigator. Hyatt pleaded guilty to two lesser felonies, attempted sexual assault on a child and attempted unlawful sexual contact. He's expected to be put on probation for four years. The Denver Police Department will take its own action after sentencing when Hyatt is expected to be terminated. Also today, Denver City Council could vote to extend its emergency measure for migrants another month. Denver started its disaster declaration in December when hundreds of migrants were arriving in the city each day. The declaration is set to expire a week from today. The city's helped more than 5,700 migrants over the last three months. Right now, there are 128 people sheltered in city buildings. More than 1,100 others are in shelters at partner groups. Wednesday marks two years since tragedy unfolded at a grocery store in Boulder. Ten people were sadly killed when a man with a gun walked into the Table Mesa King Supers and started shooting. Boulder is holding remembrance events on Wednesday to honor the victims and help people heal. The city is still offering mental health support at the Boulder Strong Resource Center on Baseline Road as well. The case against the suspected shooter still on hold at this time. Doctors say he is not competent to stand trial, but he could be given the right treatment. We are expecting another update next month. Colorado is already seeing an influx of women coming to Colorado for abortions. This is other states restrict access. Now a major change by our northern neighbor could mean more people from out of state relying on Colorado clinics. Wyoming's Republican governor just signed a bill to ban pills for abortion. It's the first law of its kind in the country. Wyoming only has one clinic providing abortions and it only does medication abortions. That clinic is now canceling appointments for next week. The governor is expecting the ban to end up in court. The state broader abortion ban is already facing lawsuits. The fate of the abortion pill and its use nationwide is in the hands of one judge in Texas now. U.S. District Judge Matthew Kaczmarek could make a decision any day now about whether the FDA's approval of Mifepristone should be revoked. That decision could further hinder abortion access throughout the country and send more people to Colorado for care. Planned Parenthood says if that ban happens, the drug used in combination with Mifepristone could be used on its own as well. Coloradans could soon get some of their prescription medication through a machine. A bill that would make it legal is moving through the Colorado legislature right now. The bill already passed the House and a Senate committee is scheduled to discuss it on Thursday. While medicine would be dispensed by a machine under the legislation, a pharmacist would still have to be present. That pharmacist would do a video chat on the machine, talking with patients and confirming identification. The machines are also designed to be resistant to break-ins. Colorado isn't the first to consider these automatic pharmacies. Arizona, Illinois, and California already have them in use. And Governor Polis now has a bill that would allow more Colorado teachers to qualify for loan forgiveness. The legislation got final passage in the Senate on Friday. The bill allows more teachers to get financial assistance with the goal of preventing them from needing a second job to make ends meet. Well, it seems both Democrats and Republicans can agree on something, and that's to crack down on TikTok. There's a growing bipartisan push to keep a closer eye on the Chinese-owned app. And this week, lawmakers will hear from the company's CEO. Sho Chu is set to testify before a House committee on Thursday. NBC News reports the CEO is expected to tell lawmakers that TikTok has 150 million users in the U.S. Lawmakers from both parties and the White House say the app poses a threat to national security because the Chinese government could use it to spy on Americans' data or even influence public opinion. The FBI and the Justice Department are investigating claims the company has already used the app to spy on journalists. Colorado Democratic Senator Michael Bennett and Republican Congressman Ken Buck are leading separate efforts to limit the app in the U.S. Bennett wants it removed from app stores and Buck wants an outright ban. New this morning, Denver is one of a handful of cities with access to a new ride share feature designed to keep you safe. 90s reporter Brianna Fernandez is following the story for us this morning and Brianna Uber is rolling out this feature to both prevent incidents as well as document them when they do in fact happen. Exactly. So this new safety feature launched back in 2019 in Latin America and has expanded to several cities, including right here in Colorado. People in Denver, Fort Collins and Colorado Springs can access it on the app. And this feature will allow drivers and riders to record audio at any point during the trip. So we know this new safety feature is not automatically on your app. You can find it on the app safety toolkit section. Once it's enabled, both you and the driver can start or end audio recording at any point during your trip. 
That audio will then be saved and encrypted on the device of the person who initially, initially enabled it. And Uber hopes this will prevent incidents and document them when they do happen, protecting everyone involved. We're always looking for ways to improve safety on the Uber platform, both for riders and drivers. And we want to lean into technology in order to be able to do so. And that's exactly what audio recording is looking to do. Uber says the user will have a week to submit the recording. Otherwise, that audio will expire from the device. The company says no one can go back to listen to the recording. So Uber, the rider and driver, won't be able to access the audio unless the user decides to send a report about the trip. Corey Jordan. And when that does happen, Brianna, you can see why a feature like this is needed because so oftentimes this is left to a he said, she said. You're left guessing who is actually right. So this will give them something concrete to work with. Exactly. Now Uber can automatically listen to that audio and see what went wrong during that trip. All right, Brianna, thank, thank you. you. And one thing you want to know about the weather today, seasonal temperatures that would be in the 50s with mostly cloudy skies. And then tomorrow we'll see temperatures about the same with mostly cloudy skies again. Empowering women starts with creating connections in the community, and that's exactly what's happening at the Colorado Women's Center. It's a special spot in Denver dedicated to building women up across the state. Let's take a look. I hear laughter. I hear sadness. I hear just healing. The Colorado Women's Center is filled with comfort and inspiration. Women focus so much on others, and so to have this safe container of a space in this one hour where they can grow and heal and um, become the best versions of themselves. Creator and CEO Kendra Maguez says the journey starts with building connections and setting goals. The wellness co coordinator can get to know them, their needs, what they're looking for, what they want to work on, and then they can match them with one of our therapists. Offering sessions for all ages in five locations. We've gotten to really know all the different communities in the front range. And we also have a really big need for mother-daughter sessions. Looking to help Colorado women rise regardless of their circumstances. When women walk out of this door, they love themselves a little bit more than when they walked in. The Colorado Women's Center has low cost options and sliding scales to help make their services more affordable. And it's not just about helping clients. The center provides jobs for 30 women. They also organize free community events. You can find more about that on their social media. I think this is a great idea. Yeah. It is, you know, because it's kind of a one-stop shop. You can go there, they kind of talk to you, evaluate what's going on, and then they have therapists for kind of all realms of yeah, life. Yeah, I like that they offer that with mothers and daughters because that relationship is so important for the rest of your life. So navigating that and making it strong at a young age yeah. for daughters is, is special. Yeah, and the overall picture, too, is it's really connecting women with other women because yeah. I truly do believe that. We're stronger together, and so it's nice to have that place where everybody comes together like that. Certainly. Good story.